After Robert's rebellion, a young Ned Stark rode home with his sister Lyanna's child, Jon Snow. It took Lady Catelyn a fortnight to marshal her courage, but finally, in bed one night, she asked her husband if Jon Snow's mother had been a Shard Dane. That was the only time in all their years that Ned had ever frightened her. Never ask me about Jon, he said, cold as ice. He is my blood, and that is all you need to know. And now, I will learn where you heard that name, my lady. She had pledged to obey, so she told him, and from that day on, the whispering had stopped, and Ashara Dane's name was never heard in Winterfell again. Ned had made a promise to his sister, presumably to protect her son Jon Snow, so that was enough. Enough of a reason to frighten Catelyn into silence. It was his way of honoring Lyanna's dying request. However, there might be more to that story, an additional reason why Ned's response to her was so cold. Lord Eddard Stark lived by a set of codes, one of which was that he who passes the sentence should swing the sword. Unfortunately, he was not able to live up to those terms with Sir Gregor Clegane since Ned's leg was injured at the time. As a result, he sentenced Gregor to death and sent off other men to swing the sword. Since Lord Eddard was Hand of the King, he had the authority to deliver this sort of sentence instead of waiting for Robert to return from his hunting trip. But the mountain was one of Lord Tywin's men, so Ned's order was very bold and arguably reckless. Why did he do it? First and foremost, the crimes themselves. The mountain had been going around burning and pillaging the Riverlands as Tywin's response to Lady Catelyn having taken Tyrion hostage. But that was not the only reason. Ned had already despised the mountain for a long time since he and his men had brutally killed Rhaegar's wife and children towards the end of Robert's rebellion. And to make matters worse, Ned might have found out that one of those children had actually been his own, his firstborn son to a Shard Dane. Let's take a step back. As they made their way north of Winterfell, Mira Reed told Bran a story, a story about Lord Went's great tournament, the legendary tourney at Harrenhal. Mira said that a Kronigman saw a maid with laughing purple eyes dance with a white sword, a red snake, a lord of griffins, and lastly, with the quiet wolf but only after the wild wolf spoke to her on behalf of a brother too shy to leave his bench. Although Bran did not realize it, it wasn't just a good story, it was a real story. The Kronigman was Mira Reed's own father, Howlin Reed, and the maid with laughing purple eyes was Ashara Dane. Ashara Dane had danced with the Paris and Selmy, Oberyn Martell, John Connington, and Ned Stark. Edric Dane once alluded to that same story. Edric told Arya that his aunt, Ashara Dane, had met Ned at Harrenhal and they had fallen in love. Since Ashara Dane got pregnant after that, odds are that was Ned Stark's first child. Supposedly, that child had been born stillborn and Ashara Dane had thrown herself from a tower soon after met with grief. Granted, that's just a story. Ashara's child might not have been stillborn and Ashara Dane herself might still be alive. On July 12, 2011, George R. R. Martin released the fifth book of his A Song of Ice and Fire series, and things got interesting. George introduced a number of new characters, most notably young Griff, who was later revealed to be Rhaegar Targaryen's eldest son, Prince Aegon. It had been assumed that the mountain had killed Aegon, but it turns out there was a baby swap, and he is still alive. Prince Aegon is traveling with John Connington, a man who had been one of Rhaegar's most loyal friends and companions. Aegon is also traveling with a woman named Septa Lamor, and Tyrion suspected that she might not be who she said she was. A popular fan theory is that Septa Lamor is actually Ashara Dane. Ashara had been one of the companions to Aegon's mother, Elia. So, if true, then Prince Aegon is traveling around with one of both his father and mother's closest companions. But how did he survive? Aegon was told that Varys had swapped him for some Tanner's son, but some fans don't buy it. A popular fan theory is that Prince Aegon is not actually Prince Aegon at all, that he is actually a Blackfire. That theory is so popular among the hardcore fan community that it is often thrown around as fact, but it is not fact and I do not subscribe to that theory. However, I also don't believe the entire story about the baby swap. As I went over at the link above, I don't believe that they swapped Aegon for some random Tanner's son. And I also don't believe that Ashara's child was stillborn. Instead, I believe that Ashara Dane swapped her own child for Aegon. One thing we know for sure is that the Aegon baby swap was not the only baby swap in the book. 
Jon Snow swapped Gilly's baby for Mance Raider's baby in a feast for crows. And then, George R. R. Martin revisited that exact same scene a second time in A Dance with Dragons. That is the only time that George has ever revisited a specific scene like that, which raises the question, why did he repeat that same scene from a different point of view in two different books? Well, books four and five were originally supposed to be one book, so by revisiting the baby swap scene a second time from John's perspective, George was able to get that baby swap into the same book as the Aegon baby swap. It's worth noting that John's goal was not to sacrifice Gilly's baby in place of Mance Raider's baby. If Melisandre had decided to burn Mance Raider's baby, John would have stopped her by telling her that she had the wrong one, so there would be no point in burning him. The same thing should have been the case for Aegon. They should have had time to tell everyone that there was no point killing the baby since he wasn't actually Aegon. Unfortunately, Gregor killed the baby right away without finding out about the baby swap. When Tywin Lannister presented the corpses of Rhaegar's wife and children to Robert Baratheon as a token of fealty, Ned had named that murder. But Robert called it war. As a result, Ned rode out that very day in a cold rage to fight the last battles of the war alone in the south. First, he lifted the siege at Storm's End. Then, he rode further south to find his sister. And now it begins. No. Now it ends. Ned and his men fought and killed Sir Arthur Dane, Sir Oswell Went, and Lord Commander Gerald Hightower. Seven against three. Only Ned and Howland Reed survived. Lyanna gave birth to Jon Snow, and Ned made a promise, presumably to protect him. Before Ned rode back north to Winterfell, he brought Sir Arthur Dane's sword over to his sister, Ashara, at Starfall. Not much is known about this interaction. Did Ned tell Ashara the truth about Jon? Did Ashara tell Ned the truth about her child, and if so, what was that truth? Had she been pregnant with Ned's child, and if so, was their baby actually stillborn, or had she swapped their baby for Prince Aegon? In other words, did the mountain kill Ned Stark's first child? And if so, did Ned know? I strip him of all ranks and titles, of all lands and holdings, and sentence him to death. 